I'm Mehdi Hassan, and I've come here to the Oxford Union to go head-to-head -head with Zhang Weiwei, the best-selling Chinese author who says his country doesn't need and doesn't want liberal democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, our guest tonight, Professor Zhang Weiwei. He was Deng Xiaoping's favourite interpreter, Deng Xiaoping interpreter, and in his book, The China Wave, he fervently defends the Chinese political model. Wait, wait, when you say in your book, The China Wave, which has sold more than a million copies globally, that it's, quote, unimaginable that most Chinese would ever accept multi-party democracy, I wonder, are you speaking on behalf of the 1.3 billion people of China, or are you actually really speaking on behalf of the 25 members of the ruling Politburo? <laughs> well, it's really a common sense assessment common sense assessment. And actually, the greatest misunderstanding about China is about the Communist Party. I use equivalent something, you know, the Chinese Communist Party would be very similar to an amalgamation of all major political parties in the UK together. But in the end, they reach consensus and work on consensus. You've claimed that liberal democracy would be, quote, miserably wrong for China. Is liberal democracy miserably wrong just for China, or are you saying it's wrong for everyone? I came to a humble conclusion. A non-Western country adopting Western political system usually ends up in two scenarios. Either euphoria to despair, or from euphoria to anarchy. To despair to anarchy. How do you feel the Japanese feel about that, or the Indians, well, or the South Koreans, yeah. or the people of Taiwan, yeah, yeah. all of whom are in non-Western societies yeah, and happily yeah, enjoying yeah, yeah. liberal democracy, no, uh, of varying of, degrees, no, but liberal democracy essentially. In the case of Japan, its industrialization was not achieved under democracy. It's under imperial ruling system. With my respect, a lot of respect for India, I've been to India many times, you look at the gap between India and China. We start at a similar level. Now, China economy is almost five times bigger. Life expectancy 10 years longer. That's not what you said. You said that if you embrace non-Western democracy, you end up in anarchy. India is clear on anarchy. India is actually only second to China in terms of poverty reduction. It's had a that's, very good record of poverty reduction. It's lifted hundreds of millions right. of people out of poverty. Yes, it's not doing as well as China, but it's not in anarchy, is it? It's perfectly no, happy mean, switching either, governments. Either two scenarios. The other uh, Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Haiti, Liberia, the list goes on. Libya, Iraq. Afghanistan. Yeah, although those societies are based on kind of foreign invasions and interventions. Um, whenever around the world dictators are toppled, mm -hmm. people take to the streets. Have you seen any well, protesters anywhere in the world say, no. give us the Chinese system? Give us the Chinese system. How come it is that the rest of the people in the world don't seem to agitate? They do agitate for democracy, even in non-Western societies like it's Iraq, a, like part, Libya. Agitated like, also by the Western media, which is still predominant in the world. But it doesn't matter. We believe the model cannot work in other countries, the Western model. We believe the model cannot work in other countries. And here's my question. If the Chinese model is as good as you say, brings about competent leadership, why not trust the people? We trust a lot of people. We trust a lot of people. We trust a lot of people. Yes. A lot of people. That's true. Well, 1.3 billion see. people, yeah. you could trust 100. Yeah. That's a lot, but it's That's not a lot. It's relative. more than the combination of total people population in the West. China's performance is better, arguably, than all the rest of Asia combined over the past three decades, especially on issues of greatest concern to the Chinese people. You say uh, China is distinctive. I think you talk about a civilizational state. Tell me what that is. Uh, it refers to a case where you have uh, the world's longest continuous civilization amalgamated with a super large modern state. Okay. If your argument is China is too distinct, too different, too non-Western to be democratic, how do you explain Taiwan? Taiwan, which you regard as part of China. Yes. They perhaps yeah. don't. They perhaps don't. 98% yeah. Han Chinese compared yeah. to China, which That's is 92% yeah. Han Chinese. Yeah. So it's even more Chinese than yeah. China. That's true, yeah. 
multi-party democracy, yeah. free press, yeah. five times the GDP yeah. per capita ahead of China. Oh, They're doing fine <laughs> with democracy in I'll Taiwan. Another figure. The civ democracy in I'll Taiwan. Another figure. The civilizational state yeah. hasn't stopped Taiwan from being democratic. Uh, Taiwan has, has a population smaller than Shanghai, 23 million. Okay. Do you know how many Taiwanese live, study, work in the Chinese mainland? 1.5 million. Okay. And so the point of that is? vote by feet. As simple as that. I mean, Taiwan is a case, typical case of failure. Taiwan is a case, typical case of failure. You just look at the polls, how disappointed people are. How disappointed people are. The Chinese government's legitimacy, in your view, is based on the fact that it's a meritocracy and that it's growing the economy at a record pace. Mm -hmm. Let That's me ask one you this. of the main reasons. Let me ask you yeah. this then. Do you accept, yeah. for the purposes of argument, if yeah. growth stops, then the Chinese government's legitimacy, the Chinese model, is gone? No, I, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. The point is, don't forget, the People's Republic of China is not East Germany. It's a product of 22 years of armed struggle. And after 1949, two wars with the United States, Korean War and the Vietnam War. Without general people's support, this kind of wars cannot be. And are you ruling Why? out and are you ruling out democracy in China, liberal democracy in China, forever? Or are you saying at this stage in our development it's not something we want? Maybe down the line. No. We know West ten times better in general than the West know about China. We know West. We will have about three million students studying abroad, two thirds return. With home. respect, that wasn't my question. Yeah. As a result, we really look beyond the Western model. model. We have found so many problems. Okay, so, so I'll take that as a no. You have your strengths. Okay, so I'll take yeah. that as a no. You're not a fan of it even in 50 you years' mean time. Transcend this model. You time. Transcend this model. Why are there so many cases then these days of high level corruption, high level incompetence? If your meritocratic system is so strong and the basis for your legitimacy, how do all these bad apples get through the, the net? No, actually, if you look at the history of uh, the rise of major powers, including UK and United States, when you experience the high and rapid economic growth and explosion of wealth, corruption also goes up. Because supervision the legal framework cannot catch up with the progress of wealth. But gradually, things will improve. But gradually, things will improve. Without a free press, mm -hmm. for example, a totally free press, how can you hold a government to account? It's totally arbitrary. The no. state, the party decides who is and isn't corrupt. Is and isn't corrupt. Compare China with uh, other major large developing countries, transition economies, Russia, Ukraine, Egypt, but why, India, why compare Brazil. with those countries? Why, India, why compare Brazil. with those countries? Why, countries? why not well, compare with Western countries? You just said you're going to transcend no, the Western no, model. According yes. to Transparency International's Corruption Index, which I'm sure you're familiar with, yeah. China is ranked as the 80th most corrupt yeah. country in the world. But China is ranked as the 80th most corrupt yeah. country in the world. Behind every single Western liberal democracy, including poor old Italy. No. China is a huge country. It's equivalent to about the size of 100 European states. In every European states is about 14 million. We have 1.4 billion. If you compare Italy or even UK with developed part of China, I'm pretty sure Shanghai does much better than Italy. Shanghai does much better than Italy. 服了，胡搅蛮缠，脸皮厚、嗯，一边一块疙瘩肉，气得刘卓直作诗，能不作吗？哎呀，敲黑板，注意注意。嗯，刚才大家看到的呀，嗯、是中共御用国师，嗯，复旦大学教授张维维，嗯，十年前的二零一四年六月与六号，嗯，在牛津大学跟半岛电视台哈桑做的一场公开辩论。第一段，嗯，这可是张维维教授为您精挑细选之后的、嗯，保护一下小心脏。辩论赛第二段立马开始，您往这儿看。Welcome back to Head to Head on Al Jazeera. We're talking about China and the rise of China with our guest tonight, Professor Zhang Weiwei, author of The China Wave. Uh, we're going to talk about China's role in the world. 
despite America's huge unpopularity around the world these days, legitimately, many would argue, given the Iraq war, Afghanistan, drone strikes, Guantanamo Bay, George Bush, and the rest. We know the, the record. The polls show that the US is still viewed more favorably around the world than China is. That's surely embarrassing. Oh, it's okay. You know. In the case of China, the vision is 10, 20, 50 years, not short pose. Not short pose. That's the advantage of China model. We can afford that. And one of the pillars of the China model, you say yeah. in your book, is its non-aggression, its peaceful mm. history and peaceful rise. Uh, but many would say, look at the region today, look mm. at the recent tensions, Chinese ships ramming Vietnamese vessels, Chinese aircraft entering Japanese airspace. We've had a standoff between Chinese and Indian troops in the Himalayas. The Philippines regularly threatens to take China to court over naval disputes. Your, na Your neighbors don't seem to think you're very peaceful. Actually, in East Asia, uh, the economic relationship is uh, booming and virtually all China's neighbors are China's largest trading partners. There are, you know, historical legacies, territorial disputes, and with regard to Japan, you know, you have to understand a bit this historical background. The Japanese government nationalizing the Chinese territory, that caused the problem. You know. The Japanese government, the Japanese government, the Japanese government. Japanese government. Okay, yeah. and, you, and, and do you accept that these tensions and these disputes have grown in recent years as China's power, influence, economy, role has grown? No, actually, I would argue perhaps uh, it had to do with the role of the United States. It's the US is obviously receding in its overall power. It's deeply worried that China will overtake the United States. So I think the United States is Behind the scene, you know, it tries to encourage Japan and certain other Asian countries. We've heard a lot from President Obama about the pivot to Asia. Mm -hmm. There's many people who say that the US views China as a threat, mm -hmm. and that's the reasoning for the pivot. I wonder, does China see the US as a threat? Uh, well, uh, to my mind, to be honest, you know, I think the United States should pivot to the United States, pivot to Arizona, rather than Asia. Okay. The United States faces a lot of problems at home. The United States faces a lot of problems at home. Crumbling infrastructure, underfunded schools. In answer to schools, my question, that's true. Just, so China doesn't really see America as a threat because it's got so many domestic no, problems? Uh, we think that uh, China and the United States can live in peace together. We could have win-win solutions. China and the United States could have win-win solutions. Okay, let's talk, let's go further afield to China's role in Africa. Just as Western governments have been rightly criticized mm -hmm. for exploiting African resources mm -hmm. nowadays, so too is China. Just as Western governments have been rightly criticized for propping up dodgy regimes in Africa mm -hmm. with weapons, with aid, mm -hmm. now China is being accused of uh, similar things. Is the Chinese philosophy in relation to Africa, basically we will give money, investment, weapons, to any government, regardless of how bad it is, as long as they're willing to do business with us? Uh, here, two issues are involved. First, how average African look at China. Most Africans appreciate Chinese presence. With regard to China's alleged support for despotic regime in Africa, well... It's not alleged. There is Chinese support no, for despotic regime. We have a, a, a kind of, we see China model. We put top priority to improving people's living standards, fighting poverty. Improving people's living standards, fighting poverty. So we do the same in Africa. Yes, but they're also fighting each other, and you're one of the biggest arms sellers in that region, along with Western no, countries. Actually, China's military aid to Africa is rather cautious. Uh, you have to examine case by case. Usually, if it involves direct confrontations between African states, China will refrain, refrain from give, giving so military. Perhaps United States support, supply, UK supplies more weapons to different uh, countries. You mentioned, you mentioned people in Africa have very positive views, and the polls do show that, and there's been a lot of very important 
investment by China and African mm-hmm. countries. But there seems to be a pushback. Listen to the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Lamido Sanusi. He says, we must remove the rose-tinted glasses through which we view China. He says, China takes our primary goods and sells us manufactured ones. This was also the essence of colonialism. Quite a strong charge. Well, I- well, I, I don't know African where figure. he made this remark, you know. Uh, China's involvement in Africa were already altogether five decades, if not longer. And uh, if you look at five decades as a whole, China really helped Africa in building a whole new infrastructure. So this remark is unfair, even for Nigeria. We build, you know, uh, oil you drilling uh, facilities, railways for Nigeria. You look at the problem of Ukraine, Egypt, and the color revolutions. I've been to all these countries, whole Eastern Europe, Africa. I think, you know, perhaps the Western uh, uh, NGO should draw some lessons. You know, what you have done wrong. You know, what you have done wrong. What? 我老脸一红，我看羞臊能力严重不足，不足。哎，跟您讲啊，那这可是教授精心剪辑的完胜片段。完胜。哎，您要是看被扬弃的那些丢盔卸甲的，那还不得臊成一只鸵鸟啊？你蹭一下脑袋扎沙子堆里边去了。哎，等会儿，嗯，哪有啊丢丢丢盔卸甲的？八卦心严重膨胀。赶赶紧的。哎呀，您听这个啊，哈桑问教授，嗯。咱们现场嘉宾在中国任何一论坛上要说出咱们今天晚上说的这些话，您觉得他们不会出事儿吧？张伟伟秒回啊，我可不敢保证。现场观众哗哄堂大笑，老张是又气又臊又恼羞成怒。哎，不不，你你们笑什么呀？行行，你们笑，早晚给你们。干干干干干嘛？教授要放毒招给我们？往这儿看。So if anyone had said. Any of this, what they've said tonight in a public forum in China, nothing would happen to them in your view. I don't know exactly, you know, because I'm not. Be- no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. 好了，国际笑话版张维维哈桑辩论赛上集就为您播放到这儿了。下集将为您按照问答的顺序，对照现场逐个解读和演绎，教授张维维是如何声东击西、偷换概念、答非所问、左右言他、兜圈子耍赖、回旋镖雷人。不对，哎，谁说他，他就骂谁的。您看看。在这儿啊，请茶友们把您看到的各种荒诞拧巴，呃，忽悠撒谎，逻辑陷阱，在留言区敲字儿分享，因为哥俩这解读啊，丰富一下内容。另外呢，哪位茶友能找到这次辩论完整的视频？嗯，千万在留言区或者通过我们的邮箱告诉我们。哎，下次给大家分享展现更完整的片段。另外，别忘了点击订阅和小铃铛，锁定老北京茶馆，咱们下期节目再见。